yesterday we had the uh, anatomy of session border control, uh, where we actually uh, uh, saw, you know, what made the session border control. Now, before jumping into you know that intelligence, uh, let's look at what actually a session border control does. Um, you know, in order to have some kind of wrap up uh, from the beginning. And the beginning was security. I mean, you know. If you look at the ITU, there is no definition of what a session board controller is by any stretch. Okay, so this was invented because there was a need uh, to fix, well, let's say, to address an issue, which is NAT traversal, um, and also you know looking at um, uh, making the cut between wanted or unwanted uh, traffic, VYP traffic. So that is you know well that. Um, a journey of session border controller all started. Um, then, you know, we ended up with the uh, compliance with government telecom uh, regulations and, and everything. And then, um, you know, the next step was, oh my gosh, when we have to go through a bunch of items, uh, we need to make sure that, you know, uh, from point A to point B, there is, you know, some kind of um, good quality, uh, you know, we can actually hear what uh, is being said you know, in, in communication. So translation became you know, another aspect of it, to go across multiple islands, dealing with protocols and, you know, and codex and, and everything. So then, you know, once you do that, uh, it's not a big step to add mediation, uh, which is smoothing out the quality of the uh, VOIP uh, signal and entering the quality of service. But then, you know, adding all these things together um, really led to the operational aspect of um, uh, delivering a VOIP, or, or let's say a VOIP service. Operation, basically, that's where we are these days with a session door controller. It's a very powerful machine that uh, provides redundancy the way, almost, let's say, the way a PSTN does. Um, and that's where you actually find that virtual running, session detail records, and, you know, session, uh, call session wrapping. So, that means, you know, there is a lot of intelligence uh, in the session board form these days. Now, another way to look at it, um, you know, still today, when it comes to net traversal and security, there is nothing out there that is the session board control. Um, and, and by the way, the standalone SBC implementation is you know, still preferred. Um, more than 60% of service providers we serve on a regular basis say, that deploy standalone session model controllers. Although you know, we see a little shift toward some integration, but you know, it's, um, it's still unclear. We're still checking the situation right now. So we'll have more to say, we'll say in August when we complete all the interviews. But, um, as I just said, the session border controller does much more than security, and it's basically a very powerful VOIP tracking. Think about CHP, I mean, you know, CHP are not um, that powerful compared to what NSBC does. Uh, and you can actually break it down, you know, uh, the um, abbreviation, you know, as, as session, management of real time IP communications, border means interconnect and peering. And that's actually where I think you know, it makes sense to actually um, look at that intelligence, intelligence aspect of the session board control when it comes to interconnect and peering. And that's maybe you know, where TransNexus uh, you know, have um, a view and can develop you know, uh, what, what it means. The control aspect with security, regulatory compliance, service level agreement, quality of service. Uh, then, you know, let's draw um, into the topic. So what, you know, what do you think? What do we do? We couple or decouple the routing intelligence from the reception board as well? And let's put it another way. Uh, should you call routing and least cost routing be part of the SBC or not? Because on the least cost routing aspect, we do introduce service providers on this and depending actually on who you talk to within a service provider, you have different views. I mean, if you talk about the long distance, uh, you know, international guy, uh, sure, uh, the LCR is a big deal. I mean, uh, if you talk to the domestic uh, 
Fox within a major carrier, uh, they, don't, they tend to don't care that much. Uh, but this is, you know, uh, what I'm coming across. So now I'd like to um, uh, introduce the, the panel again. So we have um, you know, three session board controller uh, vendors. Um, we have Ravi from Nextpoint, Don from Admin Packet to Best of Sensei, and we have Jim uh, Dalton from TransNexus. Can you please uh, start and give a few on this? Great. Be glad to. I guess. Uh so really our view, we're in the business of uh, selling these calls routing software solutions. So you know, our view is, well, we make our living really from routing being decoupled from the session board control. And I guess, you know, our view is like in every argument, there's always going to be two sides and they make sense in different situations. So, you know, there's definitely an argument you made, you know, when you decouple it, you make it more complex, you've got another system, and there's more to handle, it's more expensive. And so there's a case to be made for kind of one size fits all when the routing's in the session board control. And, uh, we talked just a little bit, but you mentioned Jim for Cisco uh, when we just sat down at the beginning of the panel. You know, Cisco has a gigantic session board controller with virtually no routing, but it's just a almost like a gigantic firewall between two massive networks that you want to separate. That, you wouldn't put routing in that, it's just really a period between two gigantic networks. But the customers we deal with really have different business needs, and they're really using session border controllers as a voice over IP switch. They're in the telephone business, and they're switching calls between different networks, not just appearing on one other gigantic network. They're switching calls to a lot of different calls from different networks, and using the session border controller, you know, as an access tandem switch, really, to interconnect different networks. And they have a vast array of routing that are really just mind-boggling. You make it available to product marketing people, you know, the different products that they can sell their customers and give that availability for least cost routing to mix and match how they interconnect different uh, service providers to give their customers different choices. You know, what we found, they come up with just gigantic routing tables. So, for example, least cost routing in the U.S., if you really optimize it down to the uh, thousand block, of an NXX, you do that for inter and trust state, that's about 500,000 breakouts or 500,000 unique routes. And then when you add on some things like, well, I want to cherry pick customers that don't block calls with bad annex, that's a bad calling number. You know, that can give you another 250,000 routes there. And then you take level three's offering, they offer this expanded local calling area. So it's an on net call, you know, given the six digit call where it's originating MPA and XX and they've got several hundred thousand of those that generates gosh another long list of routes and so you take these kind of route plans that are built from least cost routing and routing around you know bad any uh, penalty fees carriers provide you have on net routing we have customers that have routing tables really over 10 million different routes it's a huge routing table it's really just too large to put into a session border control so they need a way to, to manage this, you know, really off net and use the session border controller to query that kind of value added routing platform separately. Because it just is really too much for their session border controllers. And this is really, it's not a new model. Uh, you know, the AIN network, the old SS7 network, not that old, but the SS7 network, the advanced intelligence network, has really been built that way. You had these huge uh, service control points in that model where a call would come into a switch, and would have to go out to the service control point to get call treatment. And that's really the model we have. You know, we provide a platform for call treatment, but it's based on a, you know, a $5,000 Linux server compared to the old service control points, which are hugely expensive. So that's our model, and that's the, the, really the group of customers we serve. And we do see the need that makes sense to decouple routing from the uh, session border controller because well there's so many things the session border controllers can do and customers want the flexibility to do a lot of things that are really just beyond all the feature sets you can put into a, a routing platform like the session border controller, the city platform. Thank you, Jim. Rappi, what is your view? 